Conan. I love Conan. Head of his time, so many ways. Um, des- deserves a lot more credit and respect for his contributions to professional wrestling than he gets. Has a great understanding of how the business works. Or, yeah, he has a great understanding of, of, of the wrestling industry, the psychology that comes with it, what works, what doesn't work. It's unfortunate that Conan, you know, Conan's got a strong personality. We didn't always get along. You know, when he worked for me, we were, ugh, there were some, there were some difficult times there, but we're pretty good friends to this day. And even though we different, we, we have different opinions on, on certain things, particularly politically, socially, but we can sit down and have a thoroughly satisfying and enjoyable conversation and not necessarily a debate, but we can, we challenge each other's opinions, but in a way that's constructive and, and positive. I, I like people like that. Do you think that Conan doesn't get his just due? Because it's almost like an, a North American arrogance as far as, well, it may have worked in Mexico, but, you know, what did he do up here kind of thing? Because he, I don't think that many people realise what an enormous star he was in Mexico for years and years and years and still is. I don't know if it's an arrogance, uh, it, you know, probably like a lot of things it has more to do with ignorance than arrogance. You know, when you don't know anything, it's really easy to have an opinion that's based on bullshit. Right. Mm. Dave Meltzer again, <laughs> keep going back to him, but you know, Conan obviously became a huge thing. He was like the Hulk Hogan of, of, he was like the Hulk Hogan slash Brad Pitt of Mexico. He was amazingly popular, but what, I, and that's cool and all, but that's not whatever impressed me. What impressed me so much about Conan, and Conan really deserves a lot of credit for the success of the NWO. He had nothing to do with it in the beginning, obviously, but Conan's Conan had a cool factor because Conan had his finger on the pulse of culture and was able to kind of bring that street credibility that was so important at the time in the mid nineties, he brought that character to the NWO and it rubbed off on Scott Hall. It rubbed off on, on Kevin Nash. So that between Nash and Hall and Conan, you know, Hulk Hogan was Hulk Hogan. He was like the evil bad guy, but Hulk didn't necessarily have a cool factor. He was a badass, but he didn't have that cool factor. Nash, Hall, and Conan had it in spades. And, and it, it was in large part because of Conan's influence on Scott and on Kevin. When you see them come to the ring and had their headbands on and, you know, they looked like a couple of gangbangers, that was all Conan. But that added to the mystique of the NWO in a very powerful way. And that was Conan. That was Conan's influence. So he... Conan, and here's another thing that Conan deserves a lot more credit for. The cruiserweight division, which actually really was responsible for much more of Nitro's success than even I gave it credit for when we were doing it. It wasn't until afterwards, years later, that I really recognized that the cruiserweight division and the luchadors and a lot of the Japanese that we were bringing in and the fact that we featured the cruiserweight division each and every week and made it an important part of the show – was one of the biggest differentiators between WCW and WWE at that time. And it laid the groundwork for a lot of the performers that we see today. Were it not for the cruiserweight division and Conan's influence on the cruiserweight division and the luchadors that he brought in, Rey Mysterio would have, Rey Mysterio would not have gone on to the success that he did in WWE. A lot of the smaller wrestlers that now have been, you know, that are making six and seven figure incomes would not be having those opportunities were it not for the influence of Conan and, and the luchadors that Conan brought in. Conan deserves a lot of credit for that. 